Man, we are excited today. I mean, we're excited every Sunday because we get a chance to, to worship the Lord. If you are new here, I am Pastor Mark, and this is First Baptist Church of Welcome. If this is not where you're supposed to be, the doors are locked and you can't get out, so you got to stay here anyway. And it says, all were baptized into Moses in, in the cloud and in the sea. Uh, baptism. Uh, and this time it was a, a means to identify. They were to identify with Moses, to, to Moses as their leader, their Moses as their teacher. Moses fused to God. People fused to Moses. The chain, symbolic. John the Baptist, symbolic. It was all to, to be, show the repentance, to identify with God. And as these individuals here are being baptized today, uh, they are identifying. The water's not saving them. They are to be <coughs> identified. And Sarah said something in her prayer that, that really hit me, and that was, I pray their hearts are ready. See, if your heart's not ready, you're doing nothing. It's just, I'm going to say cold water, but we got warm water. You're getting in some warm water. It's a symbolic act. And to make the act reality, you void the true reality. And that is, you are saved. You guys are saved. The moment you believed, that was your baptism. Now you're identifying with Christ. And to, again, go back to the reality. The reality is that you're saved by grace. Through your faith. Through Jesus Christ. Now you're going to show us, show the world, the witnesses here today. The witnesses in the air. Where it speaks of the powers and the prince. prince Prince, Prince, yeah. You're putting them on notice today. You're putting them on notice. So we need to pray for you guys. We all need to pray for them. Romans 6, 3 through, 3 through 5. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in his likeness of his resurrection. And may God add his blessing to read the word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Father, we do thank you and praise you for these young individuals who are are taking that first step of obedience, and that's to be baptized. To identify with Christ in his death, in his burial, and his resurrection. Father, I ask that you just give them strength in this new journey in their life. Give them the strength to put off the old and, and uh, always be on the new. Father, I pray that uh, as many are here to witness it, that we... We continue to lift them up and pray for them, for they will be under attack. And we ask, Father, that uh, you bless them in that, in that walk they have now. For we thank you and praise you, Father, and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Leo pretty much has explained you know, why you all are here. This is a, this is a big thing. It's, it's a big deal. And... The reason that they are coming in this water and getting dumped um, you know, to be baptized is it's a several reasons, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But the biggest thing is is the obedience. They're, they're being obedient to what Jesus has told us to do in Matthew 28, which is the Great Commission. He tells us to go out in all the world and, and preach the gospel and baptize. The, the believers in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And and so that's Jesus' command to a new believer. And these people here have ex 
just displayed their love for Christ uh, over a period of time. And, and, and it, they still need to grow. They're young Christians. Doesn't matter how old, Tom, you're the oldest one here. You know, and you're not old. But it doesn't matter if you were 80 and this was your first baptism, you're, you're going to be a young Christian. And, and in order to, to follow Christ, they, they need us. They need people that, that know Jesus and have a relationship with God to, to move them along, to help them along in their walk. Because they can't do it themselves. I can't do it myself. I, I need you all. I need the, the, the Lord and, and His Holy Spirit, right? And so today is such a great day. Uh, the majority of who's being actually all, all but Tom, you know, and he, he would have been one of our youth group. Everybody is one of our youth group or has been part of our youth group. Um, and, and so it does my heart beautiful, you know, just wonderful because uh, I've been blessed to be a part of, of that, of the, the Jesus Mafia. That's the name of the youth group. And do you know why it's called the Jesus Mafia? Some of you think Mafia is a bad name, right? And it is in, in society. But the actual definition of Mafia, if you haven't heard it before, is it's a group of close-knit associates <coughs> that are united under a common cause. And their cause is Christ. Amen. And so they've been, that's been the name of our youth group for a very long time now. And, uh, and so uh, we have some of the OG youth out here, in, you know, watching us today, um, some online watching us today. And, uh, and these are our, our newest, uh, our newest mafia members. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of them. Probably good. But, uh, so let's get the first first suspect. <laughs> so Riley has been coming to youth group for. <laughs> about a year um, and she is the younger sister of one of our older mafia members and uh, Hannah is her sister and uh, sometimes they don't claim each other uh, but uh, but the thing about Riley is it's her heart for Christ and, and I'm going to say that about several of these um, today or all of them actually but but there's, there's four of them that, that well, came as a patch. <laughs> they're all softballers. They're all, you know, they're all in the same grade. They all hang out together, right? Um, but their heart is just amazing for, for the Lord. And, uh, and for them to have a knowledge of, of Jesus to the point that it brings them to tears... You know, when they feel him moving in their lives, it's a beautiful thing. And, and for us, especially for, for an old folk like me, you know, that, that, that's blessed to be just even a part of, of, of the youth group. Um, it does my heart good because I was telling someone earlier today that that's the future of our church. They are the future of not just this church, but the church in the world. And so that's why it's so important for us to take and teach and, and mentor them along in their walk with Christ. So Riley has been become a very special person. I text her every once in a while. She's probably going, why is this old guy texting? <laughs> it's always about mafia stuff. Okay. Or somebody's name that I didn't know. So, so Riley Bay. All right, Riley. Since you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in 2009, 
to your heart and life. And in, in accordance to his command, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are all part of the same package. <laughs> Riel is also one of those that when when we are going over our lessons um, at a youth group, she will she's taking notes, she's paying attention, she's asking questions, she she talks, she's not afraid to, to, to show and, and share her belief in the Lord. And it came to me that, that she's not afraid to do that in school. Either. You know how hard that is in middle school? <laughs> to, to let people know that, that, that you believe something that nobody else believes, that, that most everybody else in the school is not believing. But she's not afraid. She's bold. And that's a blessing. It's a blessing. And... and she is one of the ones, uh, and I'll never forget this. Um, this was about three or four months ago. Her and Riley and Lily, they came up to me um, and they ran up to me before youth group and they were going, Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark. We were, we were together yesterday and we were just walking and we were listening to, to, um, to praise songs we just felt Jesus. We just felt Jesus. And, and, and we're walking and we're crying and we feel Jesus. And then we're happy because we feel Jesus. And then we're crying again. And, and, and they, to know that they, that they understood the power of Christ in them. That, that he was working in their hearts. And the, fact that, and the fact that they do that almost every Sunday night at youth group. When, when we're singing praise songs that they feel the presence of the Lord. And that it brings them to tears that they they feel that. that that's a big thing. And if you've never felt that you know, that conviction, um, then I hope that maybe someday that you will. It's a beautiful thing. Brielle is a special young lady, and we are so happy that she's been a part of our group, and, and she's going to be a, an OG member for a long time to come. So. All right, Bria, since you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and in accordance to, to his command to be baptized, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. She wasn't ready to get baptized. She wanted to make sure, you know. And, and she said that, you know, Pastor Mark, you know, I, I think I want to, but I'm not. I'm not sure. I want. I want to be sure that I am. That's that's what all of these guys and girls have in common. They weren't sure, so they waited until they were sure before they made that decision that they knew what it meant and that they had accepted Christ. You know how important that is. You know how many kids get baptized. Just because they want to take communion, right? Just because everybody else is doing it. So this is something that Lily's going to remember because she waited and she thought about it, she prayed about it. And that's an example for us old people to do the same thing. 
we're blessed to have Lily. I love her spirit. I love what she brings. You never know what she's going to say. <laughs> right? And she's got all of this positive energy. And, and, and man, I love that about that. This whole group, it's a beautiful thing. So, Lily? In accordance to Jesus Christ's obedience, uh, command to be baptized, once you accept him as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is the fourth one of the group. <laughs> this is this is the that makes the full the full package. This is Morgan. And Morgan, um, her brother Brandon had started coming, and as soon as she was able, she started coming to uh, to youth group to be a part of the group. And what a blessing she's been. What, you know what I love about Morgan is that she says what's on her mind. I mean, she you know she you know, it's on her mind. It's coming out of her mouth. And, um, and luckily, it hasn't been anything wrong so far. <laughs> so, what, if that ha whatever happens at home, I don't know. <laughs> but, but that's not what comes to my ears. In any case, Morgan's also a special part of that because she's she's in that same group. They have this connection not only with one another but with the Lord between them. And and to have a group of friends that you can lean on with that knowledge and that spirit of God with between you. You know, for those of you that, that are here that, that have that experience, it's something that, that, that will never go away. It's something that's super special. And, and you know, the fact that, that Morgan you know, wants to be a part of this, decided on her own to be a part of this, to follow Christ and to, to, uh, to be baptized uh, in Him. How beautiful that is. And we're thankful that, that, that she's a part of our group. She is a, such a, also a special part of, of the Jesus Mafia. And we're thankful for her. Morgan, in accordance to Jesus Christ's command to be baptized once we accept him as our Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. She, she thought somebody had offered money to keep her under <laughs> And this is EJ. Now, uh, truth is, I've known EJ since he was a baby. His family for, for a very, very long time. And EJ was another one. EJ, what, what I love about him is he's always asking questions, and he doesn't and, and he doesn't hesitate. Doesn't matter what the question is, you know, if it's about if it's about the Lord, if it's about the Bible, he, he comes and he asks, and and you can see in his eyes that he wants to know. It's not like he's just asking to try to to uh, to. To make a, uh, an old guy, you know, a preacher, to feel good about himself, if he does it because he wants to know about what what it's about, about what the Lord is about, and uh, and the fact that that he does that, you know, shows his heart that, that he's ready and that he understands what this means. And we're thankful that EJ, after all this time, has been one of the ones that have come and, and seen us and, and grown. And, Become a part of the, the mafia family, also. So we're thankful for EJ and his family. All right, EJ. In accordance to, to Jesus' command to be baptized, once you accept Him as your Lord and Savior, I baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
So he's going to be the easiest. <laughs> this is Brandon. Brandon had started coming to youth group about, I want to say about two, maybe three years, three years ago. Um, and he came at an invite of one of his friends. And on his first mission trip, he invited one of his friends, and then that friend bailed. But he still went on a mission trip. And, and he's been on everyone ever since. Amen. Brandon is what you would consider a quiet giant. You know, he, he is there and he is expressing his command and his desire to be part of, of the Jesus Mafia, but, he, but he's quiet about it. But he's, he's, he's a leader. And that's what makes him important to our group is the fact that, that he's, he is a leader and he's learning to lead people for Christ and to Christ. Now, I can just tell you what I know here, right? What he does out in the world that you guys know. But I do know that this man has Jesus in his heart and that he has a love for him. And that, and the fact that he decided to get, that he would get <coughs> baptized you know, just further cements that in my heart. We are so glad to have him as part of our, our group. Um, it's a mafia and what he brings to the group. I'm not going to hit his head. <laughs> Brandon, in accordance to, to Jesus' command to be baptized, which we receive him as Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father. <laughs> seen her grow, we've seen her run around, we've seen her um, grow into herself. And she's the sassy one of the Dobries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but that makes her special. I, we've already baptized Sarah. Um, but on a recent mission trip that she had gone on to, um, she went down to Guatemala. Right? 
but she went to Guatemala last year um, to visit her sister Leah, and um, while she was there, she felt the spirit move. She realized that, that in that time that, that maybe she did not accept Christ the way that, that she was supposed to. And that's what happens a lot of times. A lot of times we don't, you know, we think that, that we're doing the right thing, but, but you know, and we're following the crowd. But then when she came to terms saying, you know what, now I know what I'm supposed to do. Now I know what following Christ is like. She asked if she could be rebaptized. So we're rededicating. She's rededicating her life to Christ. And that's it's a beautiful thing when 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 a believer comes to an understanding that they aren't walking in Christ the way they should, and, and they make that dedication to do it again. And this time they switch gears and get in the high gear. And that's Sarah. She's on fire with the last word. Sarah, in accordance to, to Jesus' command to be baptized. So, and because of your decision to rededicate your life, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Brother Tom Gilroy. Now, Tom has been coming not quite a year. Not quite a year. Tom started coming and um, and he just kind of walked in one day. And he's, he's a local boy. The thing about Tom is that he's hungry. He's hungry for the Lord. That, that, that he has not missed a step since he's walked through the door of this church. He's been to every men's meeting near about that we do on Wednesday night. We have a men's Bible study. Almost every Wednesday he's there. He, he's full of questions and, and, and he's looking for answers and he's looking for guidance. And he's got Christ in his life. And, and the day that he joined the church and accepted Christ um, for real um, was a big day for him and a big day for our church because, because this is one of the future leaders of this church. Amen. Amen. To, to be a part of, of, of what he brings here and, uh, and what he, he is to us already it is, is a wonderful thing for us to be able to help him grow and for him to actually help us grow. And, and we are so blessed that, that he's become a part of our family. So, um, of course, Jesus Christ command to be baptized. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that concludes our show for today. <laughs> Keep praying if you pray. I don't know what, what your relationship with the Lord is, if, if you have a relationship with the Lord. If you don't, um, and you're, you're wondering what it's all about, you know, please ask questions. You know, don't, there, don't, you know, what, what we tell the youth every, every Sunday night is, is there are no stupid questions. If there's something that, that you want to know, you can stop by here and call them. Call the phone. My number is on in the bulletin. You can call me, and, and I'll get back to you. Just, just don't miss an opportunity to, to follow Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'll be reading from the New King James Version today, Matthew chapter twenty-eight, verse eighteen through twenty. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, "All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth." Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. May God bless the reading of his word. Well, as I had prepared for today's service, uh, I realized that that there would probably be people here, certainly some that are watching on online, who've never witnessed a Baptist type of baptism where we put a person all the way under the water. And if you saw that for the first time and, you know, and it seemed a little strange to you, um, I'm going to try and work that out for you. Uh, I also realize that there are plenty of people here who have been Baptists all their lives, who uh, were baptized years ago, but who seldom think about the meaning and the significance uh, of this event in their life. So whether that this was the first time, the tenth time, or the hundredth baptism you've ever observed, uh, I think that we can all benefit from exploring some of the things that the Lord has to say on the topic. Baptism is a subject that often gets ignored in, in Christian circles, um, in churches, uh, even though it's, it's important. Christians from almost all denominations agree uh, that, that that isn't good, that, that we should know and understand what baptism is, is all about and, and the significance of it. And though as denominations we might differ about the mode and the objects of baptism, um, how it should be done and, and whom it should be done to. Most Christians agree that it is important to be baptized. And after all, the Great Commission, the job that Jesus has given us, involves going and making disciples, as recorded in Matthew that, that um, Ellen just read, in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. So I'm going to read that again really quickly. God's word says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Because Jesus himself was baptized by John the Baptist, and as Jesus' followers, we're supposed to be baptized also. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38, the apostle Peter commands the crowd, he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Throughout the book of Acts, and the rest of the New Testament, really, um, the clear expectation is that anyone who is a Christian, is going to be baptized. You're going to get wet. And that's why Paul said in, in Ephesians 4, 5, that, that we as Christians all share one Lord and one faith and one baptism. And indeed, almost all Christians agree that the ordinance or the sacrament of baptism is a rite that signifies our union with Jesus. It symbolizes that we share in the benefits of Christ's death and his resurrection, and as, as was uh, said earlier before by Leo or, or Chris or both, you know, when, when you go in the water, you know, you're a sinner. You go under the water as being, being buried with Christ, and you come out of the water as being resurrected with Christ is, is the, the symbolic part of, of that, um, that sacrament, that, that ordinance. Indeed, almost all Christians agree it symbolizes that we share the benefits of Christ's death and his resurrection. And in Romans 6, 3, and 4, it says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. And in Colossians 2.12 says, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are raised, arisen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. So water baptism signifies our experience of being baptized by the Holy Spirit, through which we're made part of the body of Christ. And in a lot of ways, it's like a wedding ring. 
Now, this ring that's on my finger right here, right? I mean, that's a sign, uh, that's a sign to remind me and whoever looks at me that, that, my, that, that, that I'm married, right? That, that I have one wife, and, and that's Mary, and she just left. <laughs> She'll be back. <laughs> Baptism is, is an event which tells uh, everybody that witnesses it, including the one that's been baptized, that, that as he or she remembers what happens, that, that this individual as a Christian has one Lord, and that's Jesus Christ. That's, that baptism seals them together. And though there's general agreement among Christians about the importance of baptism, there are differences in the particulars of baptism. And as we mentioned earlier, um, there, the, these are some of the things that distinguish Baptists from the other denominations. But we're not going to talk about that. I want to take time to highlight three key parts of what my understanding is. Of baptism is what the the understanding of a bapti- baptism is to this church, and um, and what we believe about b- baptism. The first thing is is that we believe that baptism is not a means of of salvation. Again, Chris and Leo both have mentioned that uh, we think that it symbolizes the salvation that we receive through Jesus Christ, but we don't believe that a person receives salvation by being baptized. So it's not the baptism does not save them. That is not bring them to Christ. Though some people claim that the act of baptism by itself washes away our original sin, and it gives us an occasion on which we can experience regeneration by the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't see either of those things that are taught in the Bible. Neither of those are biblical. But rather, we understand that the key instrument in receiving God's salvation, the way that somebody gets saved, is through faith, through believing in Jesus Christ, in believing in everything about Christ. Listen to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace ye are saved through faith, that not of yourself it is a gift of God, not of works, yet lest any man should boast. Now there's no mention of baptism. There's, no, now there's not even a mention of a drop of water in that text. And though there are passages which speak of, of faith and baptism together, the Bible is clear that it's by faith alone that that Holy, Gen- that Holy Spirit generated faith, that, that understanding, that act of forth, force in receiving Christ. While baptism is, is an outward symbol of an inner reality that we have Christ in our life. And that's why the Apostle John said, was able to say in John 3.36 that he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Again, belief, which is another word for faith, not baptism, is the key. And so my conclusion is that an individual becomes a Christian when by the grace of God he or she puts faith that believe they trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's what they have to do. That's what saves you. That's why Billy Graham says that it doesn't matter if you're a church member who's been, it doesn't matter that you've been baptized or that you're a religious person. If you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are spiritually lost. (coughs) Now, that wedding ring analogy may provide some help for this point. Now, if my son Marcus was to take my ring off of my dresser, my wedding ring off my rest dresser, and he puts it on his finger, that doesn't mean he's married, right? Of course not. The ring by itself means nothing. At least in the eyes of the, of, of the of state of Maryland, you need a, mar- a marriage license, you need a, 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 a licensed preacher, somebody l- l- uh, licensed to, to do the marriage, to, for it to be blessed. 
a couple that, that goes through a marriage ceremony, but for some reasons they don't wear rings. Because in today, you know, a lot of you guys, you know, in your because of your jobs, you might not wear a ring, right? It might not be a sa- it might be a safety hazard. So, so if that's the case, if you're not wearing that ring, does that make you not married? Don't raise your hand, guys. Like, it'll get you in trouble. No, you are still married whether you're wearing a ring or you're not. But if somebody who puts on a wedding ring who's never made any type of commitment to a husband or a wife, they're not married, right? It's just a decoration. And in the same way, I'm convinced that apart from faith, the act of being baptized is of no spiritual benefit in and of itself. Unless there's faith in Jesus, being baptized does no more to a person than get them wet. In other words, they go in the water as a sinner and they come out of the water as a wet sinner. If the person who's being baptized isn't a Christian when they step into the water, they're not going to be a Christian when they step out. That's why it's important, you know, for this group especially, because they had shown, they had had expressed their love for Christ. That you could see it working in them. You could see how, how the power of the Lord is working on them. And I love that. I love to see that happen. Not because of anything that, that we have done, but everything that the God that God has done. I'm confident that God honors the act of obedience of being baptized. So being baptized can strengthen someone's soul. But to be clear again, it's not the water. There's nothing magic in the water. There's nothing special in that water. But it's the faith motivating the action of getting in that water. The second thing is that we believe that only those who are believers in Jesus should be baptized. As I mentioned earlier, the Lord commanded everyone that, uh, that, that received Jesus as Lord and Savior that they would be baptized. And baptism should be one of the first steps of being a follower of Jesus after you become a Christian. Now again, you know, with, with this group, they took their time because they wanted to make sure that they understood. They wanted to make sure where their walk was, that they, that they were comfortable, that they understood, that because they knew that it, was, it wasn't just a, a small thing. It, it was important. But then there's a disagreement within the Baptist circles as how soon should someone be baptized as they, after they profess to be a believer in Jesus. Some churches, a person who prays to receive Christ during a Sunday morning service is going to be baptized the same day. Other churches believe there should be a period of instruction where where somebody, um, you know, before somebody becomes baptized. And who's right? You know, I think it's a case-by-case thing, but, but the New Testament, if we read the New Testament, it tells us that, that everybody who turned to Christ was baptized. So the day that you went and you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you found some water and you got dunked. That that same day. But sometimes sometimes there has to be some understanding. Sometimes like some of our our, our young people that wanted to make sure they, they wanted to have their heart right. They wanted to understand that w- what their walk was like. That it was, that it was Jesus. It wasn't just a funny feeling, right? That, that they wanted to be a part of it. I know that there are a number of young people here today who are wondering uh, when they might be baptized And if you understand what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a follower of Jesus, and if you know you're trusting him as your Lord and Savior, then you should be baptized. And if you have any questions, anybody here has any questions, please stop and talk. If not to me, then to somebody else in here that that has a a belief in Jesus. Man, I mean, we're going to do baptisms next week, so might as well, I'll, I'll leave the water if you want to come back.
Well, we believe that the Bible teaches that an individual that's to be baptized, that he or she becomes a Christian after he or she expresses their faith in Jesus. And that's the pattern throughout the book of Acts, that the rest of the New Testament is the same way. They think that the, the Bible is clear to each of us as individuals to trust Jesus and to make the decision on our own, to be baptized, to come to Christ, to make him our Lord and Savior of our life. The third and final thing for today is that we believe that the proper mode of, of baptism, evidently, is by immersion. You know, that, that means that, that we put somebody all the way under the water. I, yeah, even Brandon, I got him all the way under. <clears throat> the, meaning, the Greek meaning for the word uh, baptism is to immerse or to dip under. That's the, the literal meaning. And this is something that most Christians who aren't Baptists freely admit. Luther and Calvin, uh, for example, both acknowledged that baptized means to immerse and, um, and that the early church certainly baptized by immersion. And then Brenner, who is a Roman Catholic historian, he writes, for the first 1,300 years of church history, baptism was generally and regularly an immersion of the person underwater and only in extraordinary cases, a sprinkling or pouring with the water. The latter were disputed modes of baptism and often forbidden. The reason then that sprinkling or pouring became the common mode of baptism in various churches seems to be because of convenience. Um, you know, they, maybe they didn't have the ability to have a body of water or a tub of water to be able to, to baptize. So that was the, the easiest, the most convenient way to do it. Um, instead of, of, of doing a total immersion. Now, to be fair, I have to admit that we Baptists usually do something very similar with the Lord's Supper. Jesus almost certainly used water and unleavened bread when he served the, the Last Supper. But in our church, we use grape juice and unleavened bread. The primary reason for this is convenience, right? I mean, and certainly we could use wine, but if there's somebody in our church that has a, an issue with alcohol, we don't want to tempt them. Um, and grape juice is a whole lot cheaper. Um, so so we, do that, we do the same thing with, with that. We don't use wine, real wine. But they're symbols, you know, and... and um, and the sprinkling or the pouring of water instead of immersion is, you know, is symbolic of, of going through that immersion. Going under the water, again, represents being buried with Christ. Coming out of the water represents that new life that we have in Christ. And for that reason, I believe that baptism by immersion isn't the only biblical mode, but it's the best mode of, of baptism. And there's a a bunch of opinions on how, on how baptism by immersion should be done. <laughs> Most church, churches, I believe, do it just like you saw me do it. Um, I did read of some churches recently um, where uh, where they take and they baptize them back, backwards once, forward <coughs> once, backwards twice, forward twice, back. If I did that to these kids today, they would be scared. They would, they, if you saw that today, they, you, people would never get baptized again, I believe. <laughs> anyway, um, so, so I believe that we do it the way we do it is, is the proper way. Now, you know, how you're baptized isn't as important. You know, I mean, that, that's what we believe. That's what I believe, uh, how bap bapti baptisms should be. Um, but you should get baptized. If you're a believer in Christ, be baptized. That's, that, that Jesus told us to do. I don't know if this sermon has helped you make sense of anything that, about baptism today or not. Um, hopefully you have a better understanding that, that what me as a pastor and, and what this church believes in ba as baptism and what the Bible teaches. Uh, and, I, and I fear that sometimes that we might miss the forest for the trees by talking about the details surrounding baptism. And I'm afraid that we miss the fact that, that we witness this wonderful event.
Today we witness the baptism of, of, of nine individuals. For each of them, this is a testimony of God's grace on their experience of the amazing grace in their life. That Jesus came to them, the Holy Spirit moved them to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior for the rest of their lives. Brothers and sisters, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, these baptisms ought to cause you to reflect back on your own experience of God's saving grace that caused you to joyfully thank God for that. And of all the blessings that we enjoy, this is the, the one for which we should be the most thankful. If you're not a believer in Christ, or, or maybe you're not sure, I encourage you to talk to me or to talk to someone else who can help you understand what it means to trust in Jesus. And if you aren't doing that, you're missing out big time. I don't tell you that because I don't get, I don't get paid any more or less if you come to Christ. That doesn't affect my pay. I do it because I believe and I love everyone and I believe Jesus wants every one of us to be with him. Every one of us. And for you, those of you out there that are listening to me, that say, I'm, I ain't good enough. I'm too bad. I've done way too many bad things in my life for God to ever forgive me. Talk to me. I'll tell you my story. And if he can forgive me, then he certainly will forgive you because he's bigger than any sin in your life. All you got to do is trust and believe. Those who have been baptized today and are not only testifying about what God has already done in their lives, they're they're also making a pledge that they'll seek to follow the Lord Jesus through the rest of their lives. And as witnesses, it's our job to help encourage them to do just that. They're saying that, that they're ready to join us in the battle for what's true, what's right, what's good. A battle for the kingdom of Jesus. Now we need to welcome them into our ranks. We need to make sure that we're, we're seeking to follow the Lord each day and being an example to them. And if we've been a little lax on doing that, because let's be honest, we do that, right? We kind of fall behind sometimes. It's time to recommit ourselves by God's grace to do just that. Now, if you're leaving this sermon with more questions than answers, stop and talk to me. Don't walk with the question mark over your head. I'll be happy to answer whatever I can. For all of our uh, Baptists, baptism receivers today, I'm going to get you guys to come on back up here and sit in the front row next to Ms. Lisa uh, for one minute. And uh, we're going to sing our last song. And uh, when, after this song, um, we're going to pre present our young folk with uh, some uh, bap uh, bap baptism certificates. We're thankful for you guys. Let me pray real quick. Father, we're thankful for, for today. We're thankful for those... Um, young men and women that have come forward and accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we're thankful that you, you moved in their lives to, to have them follow um, your command to be baptized. Lord, we are so thankful for all the witnesses that came out to be a part of it. We ask that you bless all of them, each of them, Lord, and that you would just move in their lives in a way that they feel that, feel that you're real. And Lord, if there is a, a heart that it is in question, if there's a, uh, a question uh, in, in what they believe or don't believe, Lord, that you would place them um, up front here this morning or, or in the back as they leave or down at, at, at the meal, that they would get in touch with somebody about their question. And Lord, that we might be able to help you, uh, help them find Christ in their life. We thank you for the love that you give us through Jesus Christ. We thank you, Jesus, 
for stretching out your arms on that cross and dying for us, for loving us that much. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the precious name of Christ Jesus, we pray. All God's children said, amen. amen. So for all of you that are here today and you witness this baptism, this is <coughs> the next step for them. This is, this is that step in obedience to, to Christ in their Christian walk. You as parents and grandparents and friends and, and, and family, it's important that we walk with them, that we, that we d direct them. The best way to do that, as I said earlier, is to do it with our lives, you know, with our words, with how and who we are in Christ, because that's what they're going to be looking for. Because let's, let's face it, everybody that's outside of here that, that knows that you're a Christian is listening and watching what you do and what you say, and that's an example of, of how they think a, a Christian should be. And so that's how they, as young Christians are going to look at how you act as a Christian in their walk. And I'm so proud to be a part of your, your lives, you know, that you would have an old crusty guy like me be, be a part of it. I'm blessed by each of you in your own very special way. Thank you. And thank you for letting them come and to be a part of us. And thank you for letting us love on them and you, for, by, and you love on us. Thank you. Can we give them a hand? Now. Father, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for this, this awesome day that we were able to share with uh, these men and women up in front of us as they just go on in their journey, Lord, as they, as they really begin their journey moving towards you. I, I pray, Lord, that we as a church family would lift them up continually that we would that we would come alongside them um, that we would help them grow and that we would also grow from them and from the examples that they're giving us in our lives i pray lord that they would be blessed that you would put a hedge of protection around each one of them as, as they're now uh, they're moving towards you in a way that they maybe weren't before lord as the attacks of the devil come i just pray that you would guard them, you would guide them, and that they would remember to listen for your voice always. Pray, Lord, that you would bless the food that we have uh, downstairs, and you would bless the hands that provide it, and that you would just bless, bless us with the nourishment that comes from it. And it's in Jesus' name that I ask all these things.